Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today, we are on the bridge of the Betrayer in the Tundra, building a fortress right on the bridge. This build is completely mod free, so you can feel free to recreate this build on your single player, PvE, PvP, or roleplay servers. Firstly, I started off by laying down the foundations I wanted to have on the top side of the bridge. For this build, I wanted to go under the bridge along with building on top of it, so there's extra room for storage and living areas. I started off by placing a gate in the stone archway that is already present on the bridge, and then using storm glass foundations to begin building out the basic shape of the structure. I'll be trying to stay within the confines of the bridge's natural shape for the most part, creating raised platforms on both sides with a strip going down the middle, that will lead to another gateway a bit further down the bridge. I built these side platforms two tiles wide, and ran them down the bridge until I got to a point where I thought the build was as long as I wanted it to be, though of course you could go longer. I also used wedges to add accents on the edges, with three tiles between each edge. I then added a gateway on the other side of the bridge, along with a small entrance platform. Next for the area underneath the bridge. Initially, I thought about hanging a room from the bridge itself, which would work, but I decided instead to fill an entire gap between the stone pillars with a huge rectangular room. I'll be using elevators to reach this area, so I built pillars down, and then used storm glass foundations again to build a large rectangle between the pillars. I then built the elevator shaft, along with placing the elevators and the platforms on top of the bridge. You don't have to build the shaft of course, but it does make the elevator a lot safer to use. Next, I built up the rectangular room. I won't be including northern or southern walls, nor a ceiling in this room, as I want to keep the bridge's stone aesthetic very much present. I built tall walls with a mix of storm glass walls and frames in an easy, consistent pattern. Later on, during the furnishing phase, I added buttresses at regular intervals to help make this section more interesting from the outside. Next, I went back up to the bridge level and built up the triangular accents. I did this to create spiked accents that will both support the first floor and also sit above the structure to add some of those gothic characteristics I used in the dark tower build, which worked really nicely. I also fenced off the open edges and walled off the back. I also built a small platform at the top of the stone archway. This will be perfect for archers to guard the southern entrance of the fortress. Next for the first floor. I'll be building the first floor three tiles wide, using pillars to support it on the ground floor and borrowing some stability from the triangular accents.
I built up small staircases next to the elevator platforms to reach the first floor, with doorways underneath the stairs to access the elevators unimpeded. I also then added a small connection to the middle of the first floor to allow you to cross between the sections, and then fed stuff the ground floor platforms. Finally, for the roof. This build will be open air, so I'll be building partial roofs over either side of the build. I built the triangular accent up and then started on the roof. I did encounter some stability issues on the window sections, as they lacked any support from underneath, so I had to add in pillars on the outer side of the build to pass stability up to this section and thusly support the roof. I built the roofs themselves with the same pattern as the walls below, adding wedge pieces every two tiles to build up these spiked accents that will help to breathe some more character into this build. I also added these spiked accents onto the first floor, and of course the triangular columns as well. Finally, when the shell of the build was done, it was then time to of course furnish. Approaching the build, I've protected the southern entrance with a cacophony of palisades, and archer platforms both on either side and above the gate. Entering the fortress, I've lit the structure with protected standing torches and decorated the area simply yet effectively. I wanted to make this build as practical as possible, so I've included absolutely every crafting bench I could think of, although knowing me, I'm sure I've missed one or two somewhere. I've also used torches and braziers as often as possible to negate the environment of the area. Reaching the extremely cold temperature is quite common on this bridge unless you're wearing an epic cold resistant armour set and even then you'll still find yourself very cold. Specking into Vitality definitely helps with negating that, but I wanted as much heat and light as possible to help to reduce those detrimental environmental effects.
Up on the first floor, I've extended the crafting area to include even more benches that will allow for almost any crafting or resource processing activity that you'd want to undertake. The detailing of the architecture really shines in this area. I could have just fenced off the roof or just missed off the wedge sections and it would have been just as practical, but having this interesting roof structure helps to make the build look and feel a lot more interesting and I think it really adds to the intimidation factor of the build. Heading down the elevator, underneath the bridge is a multi-purpose area. On the base level, you've got a large vault, a small wheel of pain, some guards and an altar to yog. You could upgrade the size of the wheel of pain, but you may need to expand the size of the room itself, as I just couldn't quite fit the medium wheel in here. Heading upstairs, we have a small bedroom area for safe respawning, along with another area that you could use really for anything. Extra beds, chest storage, thralls, a social space, pretty much whatever you want, it's all up to you. Finally, the northern entrance leads directly into the frozen hell that is the tundra, with the volcano looming above. And there we have it, a fortress on the bridge of the betrayer in the tundra. Thanks for watching, for this build I really wanted to construct something that was integrated into the environment. And I think I managed to do that pretty well by commandeering an entire section of the bridge and turning it into a grim fortress. As always, you'll find all the links to my Twitch, Discord, Twitter, Patreon and NordVPN discounts in the description below, along with credit for the music used in this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, I put out at least two videos a week, so there's always plenty of content to come. If you have any suggestions for future builds, I would love to hear them in the comments below. As always, a massive thanks to our patrons Sammy, Sadialot, Randar, Connor, Blue Ivy, Velma, Torn, and Eagle Rose. Again, thank you very much for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon.